Kyle, I sure hope that doesn't show up on the recording. Your Roomba that you use to clean the studio, piping off, it says, please charge Roomba. Please charge Roomba. My goodness, Kyle. Charge the Roomba, right? Darby cast Wildcard Friday. And while we're on the subject of not being prepared to vacuum, I think that segues us quite perfectly into the topic of abortion. Wow, right? See what I did there? Kyle, I took your lack of preparedness and used it to vault us into the topic du jour. Very skillful uh, was what I just did, in case you didn't know, Kyle. But chicks are pissed. Mainly liberal chicks. Mainly liberal white chicks. Let's kind of be honest here. A lot of outrage on Twitter. If you haven't heard what's going on, Roe v. Wade, famous court decision that decided that somehow, somewhere in the Constitution, there was some vague language that may or may not have secured the right for women to explode and vacuum out uh, fetuses that they didn't want. Babies. Future people. And chicks, they're pissed. Okay, they are. Kyle, you've seen it. You've been on Twitter like a moron. Who goes on Twitter, Kyle? Yuck. Okay. Although I wouldn't be particularly upset if you were to fire up Twitter to get some really juicy idiot quotes from people. Boy, has this just flushed the human repeater signals of the world out into the main stage. People who don't know how to uh, formulate their thoughts on a whole lot of things, so they just like take screenshots of what other people have said that's like marginally coherent if you don't really like think about it. They just put that out there and then they feel smart and then like 15 of their friends are like, you know what, everywhere chicks should be able to explode babies' heads. Do this thing right. Listen, I'm not a fan of exploding uh, babies' heads in the womb. I don't think it's the best idea. But then I zoom out and I say, wow, look at these chicks, right? They have been thoroughly and violently in favor of making the first thought that they have after being bestowed the responsibility of taking care of a child, their first thought is like, I think I should kill it for my career. I'm trying to climb the corporate ranks of the Dunkin' Donuts HR department and, you know, I'll be damned if this little idiot Inside me, it's going to fuck that up, right? I don't want that. Corporate for Duncan. America runs on Duncan. I don't think chicks getting abortions just on the casual, like out of convenience. I'm going to throw this out here. Many of them are not mother material in the first place. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Many chicks should not be reproducing. They want to have all the consequence-free boning uh, that they so choose. But maybe life is about more than that. It very well could be. Okay, Kyle? Maybe it's not just about masturbating with other people's bodies until you get really tired and you say, all right, you got a decent job, Kevin? I'm going to link up with you. We're going to get married, Kevin. Take my war zone of a womb where there have been casualties and try to do something with it. Huh, Kevin? How's that sound to you? Meanwhile, Kevin's like, I feel special. Are people excited about bronze medals? Like, yeah, you weren't my first or second option. Hell, you weren't really on my podium. But Kevin, I'm going to do you. Because you have a stable job. You are mostly spineless, so I can walk all over you. Let me take your D-grade jeans. I'm not talking about your dungarees. 
And let's try to make a person with my catastrophe of a mental health landscape and you possessing very unappealing sexual qualities. What do you say? You know, the pro-choice people, they often remark, what about rape? And it's like, you don't want to go there, you idiot. You haven't thought that far into this, because if we talk about rape, you're going to get into some racial stuff that you're not ready to hear. Okay. Boy, did Kyle, you want to pull that one up, the one that you sent me the other day? You took a screenshot of it. I don't know who this chick is, but she's got a check mark, a blue check mark on Twitter next to her name. How common is that now that you just have a gaggle of nobodies who are verified? And it's like, here's Tom Thompson. Ronaldo Garcia has entered the chat and weighs in. It's like, wow, great. Thanks. But this lady. Amanda Duarte. You like how I said that, Kyle? She gave it the full force. Really tipped my hat to her lineage. Duarte. And it might even be Amanda. I don't even know if she goes by Amanda. It might be Amanda Duarte. But she's verified on Twitter and she says, I do wonder, which is redundant. It would just be, I wonder. So she's not like super well written. but. She says, I do wonder how these white supremacist lawmakers would feel if their little white daughters were raped and impregnated by black men. Oh, Amanda. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. There's a lot that we can explore in a very brief time period. We've already highlighted your glaring grammatical redundancy in the beginning. White supremacist lawmakers? Who are these people? Are there people showing up in D.C. just wearing a Klansman hood and robe and being like, hey, let's make some laws that kill minorities. Hey. These people are living in this weird fantasy land where threats exist that just don't. Most Caucasian people that I know are fairly mild-mannered until you push them over the edge and then they go from like, hey, pal, to like, newsflash, buddy, to like, listen here, motherfucker. There's a progression. But for the most part, I would say that white supremacy, which as a term has been used, I wouldn't say like ketchup, I would say more like ranch, because ranch goes on more things than ketchup does. You could put ranch on a lot of things and it's good, but blanketing everything that you don't like as white supremacy and some things that are like objectively pretty uh, like admirable, either institutions or qualities. That's really confusing to me. It has been for a long time. It's like hard work is white supremacy. That's what that is. It's like, is it? If that's white supremacy, then like, You've got a lot of white supremacists um, out in the world who aren't white. What are we even doing here? But I'm getting off topic because we need to zero in on this tweet. They're little white daughters. Now we're getting into some graphic imagery and it's like, Amanda, you seem like a pervert at your core. Like this seems like something that you blasted yourself to. Like right after you wrote it, you're like, oh gosh, this is, ah, it's like Amanda. No, no, that's your odd fantasies. You might want to put those back on the shelf. Maybe you explore that in private. Maybe you write a terrible romance novel and you never publish it. Take the Stacey Abrams approach to writing about your sexual fantasies but then do a little bit of a reverse commute and never publish it. If you haven't read Stacey Abrams or heard about her romance novels, boy, are you not missing anything. Disgusting. Very off-putting 
imagery. Okay, Kyle, back to the Amanda Duarte quote. Little white daughters were raped and impregnated by black men. This happens, not necessarily specifically to lawmakers, but Amanda, okay, Kyle, is actually scraping the surface of an issue that nobody really talks about, which is that there is quite a significant overrepresentation of uh, African American on uh, Caucasian female rapes. That's just a statistic. You can look it up. The FBI keeps statistics, and that is, in fact, a thing. Kyle, you showed me this the other day. That was concerning. If black guys make up, what, six and a half, give or take, percent of the U.S. population and they account for over 30 percent of the rapes, that's a statistical overrepresentation, is it not? Yeah, it is. But... You don't really want to go there in the abortion. It's like a rough argument to go for the abortion because then if you take a critical lens and you look at like, hey, who's doing all the raping? Not all of it, right? A very significant portion based on the numbers. That's a weird scenario. You hear these pro-abortion people who are either like probably not good future mothers or they're like really weak, effeminate men who are trying to get laid and they're like, hey, Katrina, I believe abortion is totally the right thing to do. Would you like to have sex? No, you don't have to carry my child to term. There's no, no, I wouldn't put you to that kind of standard. Truly, there should be no consequences uh, for uh, for anything that, that we do and my genes should not be passed on. And it's like, well, you might not be wrong. A lot of the argument that comes from both these really weak and awkward dudes trying to get laid and their demon-adjacent harpy ladies, it's like these weird anecdotal edge cases of being like, well, here's an exception to where I think an abortion would be appropriate. But it's like, well, that's not really kind of what we're talking about here. You don't even have to take it into a real religious zone. You just have to say, like, no, I'm not necessarily that cool with gals having consequence-free sex and asking everyone to overlook anything they do all the time. I see the other sides of the argument where it's like, listen, I'm going to be a shit mom and I shouldn't have kids because their life is going to suck. With me and whatever guy knocked me up, I don't even know who it is. You can't have conversations like this. You really can't, Kyle. And this is the kind of stuff that gets you just absolutely crushed by chicks who love abortions. And it's like, well, who cares? I have a hard time taking casual serial abortionists super seriously in their logic and their reasoning and their opinion. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to shoot my hand up and I'm going to say the way you experience reality is so different and pretty fucking twisted that I'm not inclined to take a lot of the things that you say as being important. Ouch, right? If you're a piece of garbage chick or a dude who's like a deputized enabler feeling ultra righteous and being like, yeah, fucking vacuum the shit out of that thing. Katrina, crush it. Bless the lawmakers of California's little hearts. They said, well, if you can't get an abortion in any state that you're in, sit your local strip mall where there's some kind of uh, vagina hoover emporium, then you come to California and we're going to pay for your abortions. Who here lives in California and is excited to pay for irresponsible chicks' decisions? Huh? Shoot your hand all the way up. Kyle, put your fucking hand down. What are you... Listen, man. This is not a joking matter. Although that was actually a pretty good joke. Good job, Kyle. As if the California taxpayer weren't getting railroaded 
by enough nonsense. Be like, hey, free health care for non-citizens? How about we up the ante, right? Getting an abortion does not sound fun, okay? Let me just say that. Like, if you're a chick and you find yourself in one of those edge case scenarios, which exist, like, that's not a good time. But if your name's Katrina and you're just like, nope, not ready for this fucker, like, then we need to kind of take a couple steps back and say, well, Katrina, why are you having sex in the first place? This gets us into a thoughtful conversation about the meaning of sex, love, and relationships. Does it not? Yes, long before abortion, there's other stuff that happens. And gals who are getting abortions because they're like, nope, I don't want to have that guy's baby. It's like, there were decisions that you could have made to prevent this long before you decided to explode a baby's head while it's still inside you. Birth control. Not uh, choosing to hook up with some guy named Felix. Listen, if the guy's British and his name's Felix, go for it. Full send. He's a good dude. But if he's American and his name's Felix, boy, do you need to get the hell out of there, right? And we all know why this abortion thing just kind of came to the forefront. We all know this. And if you don't, I'm about to illuminate you. It's because data about the old vaxadoodle dandy is starting to come out. Uh-oh, right? Pfizer just released a lot of data. This is what I heard from Kyle. It said that the vaccine efficacy rate's around 12%. That's what they found with their internal studies. Also, the vaccine caused a lot of damage to a lot of babies. So, like, maybe you didn't want an abortion and you kind of had one anyway because you were coerced into taking experimental medicine. How about that? We've known about side effects for quite some time with the old but abortion is something that is very emotionally charged. You have a lot of harpies and effeminate men, like I was saying, who are really about it. And they say, this is a human right. It's like you were entrusted with the duty of looking after your child. And in its most vulnerable state, your great call was to take a medical shop vac and Hey, hey, let's put this by the cervix and see how the suction goes. It's like, whoa, hard pass. But it's an emotional subject for a lot of people. A lot of chicks have been duped into thinking that they are the only one that matters when it comes to pregnancy. Like it has nothing to do with the guy. It has nothing to do with the potential baby. It's like my body, my choice. I'm great. You can't tell me otherwise. And if you do, I'm going to call you a racist. Okay. I'm fucking calling you a bigot. I'm going to call you a sexist. I am going to call you a bunch of names that have all but lost their meaning because they've been so overused. Okay. Watch out, buddy. Yeah, but this is typical uh, American institution smoke and mirrors to distract from the stuff that's like really going on. Remember inflation? Remember rise in violent crime? Remember people dying from mental health issues? Remember people dying from experimental medicine? Uh, just those things. Why don't we just drum up some emotionally charged conversations about Gal's ability to execute quasi-ritualistic murder. I think the scariest thing about abortion, I'm like going to kind of wrap up my thoughts on abortion. I think my major bone to pick, and I think this is most people's bone to pick, with chicks who are like really pro, let's fucking damage a baby until it's dead while it's still in my tum-tum is the lack of a profound emotional response to it where they are like, yeah, it's the right thing to do. Just get it out of there. I got to go to Fiji. And it's like, 
Katrina, there were so many people who failed you on your path to becoming the way you are. I'm sorry, Katrina. You listened to a lot of odd people. You were given very different coaching from generations past. That you needed to sexually experiment with a bunch of dopes and see who had the biggest hog. Try out a bunch of different weans and then you would achieve a reasonable sense of personhood. Oh, that didn't work out? Who would have thought, right, Katrina? Yeah, that's a big reality check. You say, Katrina, I don't know for certain, but there may be more to life than working for Dunkin' Donuts and getting plowed by strangers that you meet on your smartphone six times a week. Different guys. You don't know who the father is. Maury Povich? Can we talk about Maury Povich for a second, Kyle? That dude, I don't know if he's still in business, but boy, would he be working overtime if uh, he were uh, working now. Just a whole lot of, you are not the father. You are not the father. Good Lord, who is the father? Where is he, Katrina? This is so different. A lot of gals, they act like shame should never be a part of their equation of life. Shame is a very important thing for all of us. It's kind of a boundary where we're like, ooh, that was a rough choice. And then you learn from those experiences. I would imagine there are chicks out there in this world of ours who have had an abortion before. And then they regretted it and they never had another one. And that's a tough lesson to learn. Maybe they had a wake up call and they were like, well, I shouldn't be hooking up with guys named Felix who don't have British accents. Or this really took a toll on me. I snuffed out something huge. It was small at the time, but it could have been huge. But let's pivot and talk about the Vaxaruski. Pfizer is the only one to have released data. So we still got Moderna, we got J&J, we got AstraZeneca, we've got all of these great companies who have not published the damning findings of their internal studies, which they pretty much knew all along, in that these things are very dangerous. We're going to inject a spike protein encased in an experimental lipid for the delivery system, a synthetic lipid, in case these spike proteins in an oil, and we don't know how the oil reacts in the body really, nor do we know how the spike proteins react. Uh, we don't know how long they're going to replicate for, and truth be told, they might really hurt somebody and cause a whole slew of health problems, including but not limited to cardiac events, uh, clotting, strokes, the expediting of cancer. So if you've been listening to the Darby cast for quite some time, you have the general sense that there may have been something or quite a few things that were not okay about the... And you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out, right? Even if you knew nothing about the scientific specifics, even if you weren't a master's degree biologist or like a PhD epidemiologist, you could tell, you just had a hunch. You're like, why are they offering cheeseburgers, joints, and $100 bills to take this? This is a terrible, terrible sales tactic. How do people fall for these things? You've just never been betrayed in your life? Is that how it works, Kyle? You just have this really naive worldview where it's like nobody would ever do anything that was like not okay either by accident or on purpose, why would that happen? This isn't like a big I told you so to the people who didn't figure it out, but it's like, gosh, man, or gosh, hun, like what did you think was going to happen when you were on the receiving end of a high-pressure sale that was 
more poorly executed than the sale of a bag of meth at gunpoint. How did you think that was going to go? Okay. Fuck. But yeah, the data is coming out and it's not looking exceptionally pretty. It really isn't. And this all goes back to my body, my choice, doesn't it? The very same people who are saying we need to round up the unvaccinated, put them in camps and potentially murder them because they are a threat to our democracy. Do these people even listen to themselves talk? They have no problem turning around and being like, I should be able to ice a baby in the womb. It's my body. It's my choice. What if the whole dynamic was reversed and we said, hey, babe, if you get an abortion, we're going to throw you in a death camp. That has not been a proposal from anybody because that's kind of insane. Maybe abortion is your choice. But it should also be the choice of dudes to not really hook up with you, especially if you're a high quality dude. You ask chicks, be like, what's your stance? Is one of your first thoughts related to pregnancy, like I should be allowed to kill it? I should be allowed to kill him or her? Because I don't think we'd be a good match, like long term, if that's the case. If that's one of your first thoughts, at the prospect of reaching the peak of your femininity, if your first impulse is like, what if I could take away life rather than give it? Those two thoughts coupled together in rapid sequence, I'm going to say it, concerning. Yeah, maybe it should be gal's choice to uh, ice a baby. But remember, there's a lot of stuff that happens before an abortion. One of those things, sex. Before sex usually comes some kind of conversation, unless you are in a drug-addled stupor, you're at some kind of weird orgy. I don't know if those exist. I've never really tried to find one. It doesn't sound like my cup of tea. But there's a lot of abortions that happen. Boy, are there. There's so many different thoughts to explore and say, oh, well, I shouldn't face the consequences for my actions. And it's like, well, then you're not a rational actor and you shouldn't be able to make any decision about anything. If you're not willing to accept the terms of how cause and effect works, you can't be trusted to really handle anything and we should take away all your rights. Does that make sense? If you don't want consequences, you can't have any responsibilities. That used to be how people operated in the world. Understand that like, oh, opportunities come with responsibilities and consequences also come with those opportunities. If I'm not willing to accept those things, I should not be exploring those opportunities. But boy, has mass media convinced a lot of gals that they should just be able to do whatever they want all the time. And dudes, okay? Different strokes for different folks. You know what I've realized is that most gals who are quote unquote, pro-choice, they don't really think about it. They don't really think about anything in great detail. And it's all about them. Always. It's me, me, me. All the time. And selfish ladies don't make great moms. Where their children are just trophies and accessories. It's like, just get a Tamagotchi. Okay, Katrina, then you've got a little pet that you can mess around with. Maybe you even get a cat. And a lot of chicks do these days. A lot of these angry suck you by, they say men shouldn't weigh in on this decision. And it's like, well, yes, they should. 
Babies don't just happen, okay? Men are, in fact, part of the equation. And if you're spouting off complete nonsense, it's up to other people, regardless of whether they've got a ween or a vajay, to maybe say, hey, Katrina, you slut. Like, what are you doing? You've got a body count that's above the half century mark, and that's disgusting. You've had multiple abortions, and none of them were because you were in one of those edge case categories. You just shouldn't be a mom, and you shouldn't have sex, okay? But you can't stop chicks from boning. You can't. So what do you do? What do you do? Kyle, have I come to like any kind of meaningful conclusion on this? Other than like sex is a pretty important thing that should be considered with a little bit more thought before you even get down the road far enough to where you're like, hey, time to ice this little pussy. Not talking about their own reproductive unit. They're talking about the quote-unquote clump of cells. Like, wow, you have a fascinating way of describing the miracle of childbirth. My goodness. Is that it? Is the pro-choice institutional push Is that just to prevent a widespread mental health catastrophe in a lot of females who, if they had an introspective moment, were like, oh, shit, I've been told by a lot of different sources that this is totally okay, and it turns out that there's some nuance to it, and it's not just like you're either a good person or a bad person uh, when it comes to this. Like, There's a lot of consideration that should go into all things sex, love, and relationships before you're even having the conversation about nuking your uterus with a combination of drugs, forceps, and vacuums. Now, the stuff that's really, really concerning is obviously the vaccine because uh, a lot of people took it, and they're trying to sweep it under the rug by drumming up a lot of support for abortion, which you've probably made up your mind, right? You're either concerned by it or you're like, it's casual. People are kind of at where they're at. But boy, is it going to be wacky watching the mental gymnastics of people being like, taking the (laughs) was the right thing to do. I was just being a good person, okay? It's like, were you? Were you? When you were floating out pre-genocidal language about the people who weren't on board with your program? Was that, uh, you know, was you being a good person? Good job. You seem like a PhD level ethicist. You seem like you've got it all dialed in. Tight screws with washers all the way around. Kyle. Let's just wrap this up. I've dished out a lot of thoughts, all of which could just railroad us, but whatever, we've probably said worse. I've probably said worse. You never talk, Kyle, let's be honest. Remember the dynamics of mainstream media in that they are shouting about something to cover up something else. Always. Always. This whole Ukraine thing has been trying to distract people from the economic reality. There are always important stories going on, and then there's the cover-up that's usually pretty emotionally charged, and they try to drum up support for whatever cause du jour is going down that they're like, hey, this is the most important thing ever. It's like, well, there's other stuff going on that you're not talking about, and we should key in on the stuff that you're not saying rather than the stuff that you are saying, you stupid son of a bitch. Don Lemon. Hitting the eject button on a potential pregnancy, in some regards, is a lot like taking the experimental in that there are consequences that you can't avoid. You can maybe wall off thinking about it with intense 
psychological defense mechanisms, but the physical reality of the matter uh, remains as, as well as the spiritual reality. But that's going to do it for DarbyCast Wildcard Friday. What a show, right? 